welcome to my latest video as you can see from the title description this is my thoughts on AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view the first pay-per-view from the company loads of hype surrounding this uh, event will it live up to it well here's my thoughts so uh, Jim Ross on commentary joined by two other guys who I've not heard of I apologize for that um, but yeah, it's been a long time since I've heard JR on commentary, and I can honestly say he's always been one of my favourite favorite commentators. He pretty much carried the commentary in the Attitude Era. Uh, him and the King were just amazing as a team. So yeah, good to hear his voice again. As regards the card, pretty stacked, some potentially amazing matches. So let's get on with it and start with the first match, which was SCU, SoCal Uncensored which is Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky and they were facing the Strong Hearts or just Strong Hearts which is Shima, T-Hawk, Linderman um, SCU, brilliant intro once they got into the ring they are absolutely hilarious really got the crowd pumped up um, I was interested to see how this Chinese team from OWE the Oriental Wrestling Entertainment would, uh, would hold up whether they'd just be squashed jobbed out a lot but uh, no no really good match um the guys from owe put on a hell of a show looked really good um but yeah scu came away with the win um it really 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 good opening match i, I thoroughly enjoyed it I apologize for the bouncing the dogs laid on the bed having a bit of a fit well not an actual medical fit she's just rolling around uh second up we had the first ever women's aew match which was Kylie Ray versus Nyla Rose versus Dr. Britt Baker, D&D, who I think I watched in a Ring of Honor show from last year, uh, recently. Um, one night when I was having trouble sleeping. Um, then, obviously, you know, the match about to start. Brandy Rose comes out, and I was with the commentators. I thought she's going to put herself in the match, and she's going to add herself to it. But, no, she brought out Awesome Kong. So, the triple threat becomes a far away. And I felt so sorry for the other women in the match. I felt sorry for... Kylie and uh, oh, I can't remember what name now. Kylie um, and Britt Baker when um, Nyla Rose came out, and then when Awesome Kong came out, she actually made the commentator actually comment said that uh, Nyla Rose looked like a cruiserweight now, and yeah, compared to Awesome Kong, she she did look quite small, but. I expected Awesome Kong to win. I expected it to be a bit of a squash match, but it wasn't. It was a hell of a match. Um, it was the uh, the dentist whose name has li I've literally just said a name and it's gone on. Britt Baker, uh, yeah, she she got the win. Um, I kind of get the feeling that the way Brandy Rhodes came out in this, she's going to try and be some sort of like Stephanie McMahon type character, you know, throwing her authority around and stuff, which if they go that route is it's just going to not be a good thing because the whole idea is we want an alternative to WWE where the people who own it come down and get what they want, throw their weight around and essentially ruin the product for everybody. So third match was a tag match, first straight up tag team match here. It was the best friends, Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor versus Angelico and or Angelico, sorry, and Jack Evans. Trent Beretta, I remember being in uh, Rapongi. I'm sure he was in Rapongi Vice with um, Rocky Romero. Um, I knew he'd started up this best friend, best friends. No, sorry, not best friends. Best friends tag team. Uh, Jack Evans. As soon as I mentioned him, I like, that's, I don't know that name. It was in Ring of Honor quite a few years ago and I'm pretty sure it's the same one if it isn't I apologize but yeah holy shit what a match I really really enjoyed it loads of near falls near the end uh, if it is the same Jack Evans and I'm 99% sure it is the guy has not lost a beat so you, you can tell he's obviously still been wrestling around um, but yeah really really enjoyed this match eventually um, the best friends got the the win got a hug off Evans and, and Helico and then got attacked by some guys who had some goons in masks don't really know they were they didn't really add anything to the match um, if anything it kind of took away 
after like the comment the one of the commentators nailed it, it said after a 25 minute band burner it ends like this you know them getting jumped and it did kind of take the shine off it a bit so yeah then next up we had some japanese females uh, women wrestling uh riho rio mizunami hikaru shida and they were facing yuku yuka Sa sakazaki Emi Sakura, who was dressed like Freddie Mercury, which I thought was really good. And Aya Kong, um, who they'd been mentioning earlier when Awesome Kong was out. I have no idea who any of them were. A really enjoyable match, really got into it. And I, I can honestly say that um, the Yuka Sakazaki, who I think, think she's the one um, that came out first for the for Aya, Kang, Aya Kong's team, she's a little bit cute, and so is uh, Yuka Sakazaki. I thought she was quite cute as well. I don't want that to come across sexist. I just thought they were both pretty attractive ladies. Uh, so didn't know any of them. What well, hell of a match! Uh, didn't go the way I thought it would. Um, I thought Aya Kong's team would get the win and she'd get the pin, but no. Um, it was. Um, I believe it was. Um, Hikaru, Hikaru Shido got the pin. Um, I just can't remember. But uh, yeah. Next up, the fifth match on the card. The match um, from what I saw that I narrowed, well, tried my best to avoid on social media, but obviously you can't stay. If you're on social media, you have to literally black out until you've watched the wrestling. But it doesn't matter because then you have other people, you know, say, oh, you're a wrestling fan. Look at this and showing you pictures and results and stuff. Yeah, Cody versus Dustin. Bless you, Amber. Uh, video package before the match itself that they showed was really, really well done. I thought it was quite poignant, which is a word I never thought I'd use. Um, showing you Dustin uh, in the know, garage or whatever. Throwing away the mannequin head with the gold dust face paint on and throwing away his little tub of gold paint. Locking it away in a, uh, a chest. And then, yeah, showing, you know, then... Uh, Cody coming out, looking at the throne. I knew what was going to happen there. I'd seen pictures of it. Like I say, social media is a good thing and just a really shit thing for stuff like this. Um, walking past it, I thought, oh, maybe he does it after the match. And then he went back up and smashed up the throne with a sledgehammer, which was definitely a message to a certain someone in a, a company that, has Cody has said, you know, thinks they have a monogamy on wrestling. And think they own the entire thing and they don't and i'm loving that AEW, you know wrestling is for everyone I, I like that catchphrase it's a really cool one so yeah justine came out to a really really good um response i cannot believe that dustin is 50 years old and the dude is in amazing shape i'm i'm nearly 41 and I, i've been a mess for years the guy looks absolutely amazing when jr said that it was 50 i was like holy shit um, I haven't seen a bloodbath like that for a long time I think the last one I saw that was up there was probably Eddie Guerrero JBL um, when Eddie got split up and it just literally looked like somebody just turned the tap on his head and the blood were just pouring down but yeah Dustin was an absolute mess um, Brandy getting ejected was a good thing because I honestly thought oh, she's, she's going to ruin the match especially when she speared him at ringside it's like, oh, here we go, this is it, it's going to get ruined by her. She's going to make her presence now, she's going to interfere every two minutes. And it's just going to give Cody a cheap win. And there's just no need when the two guys, two brothers who've lived the business could just go out there and tear it up. As soon as she got ejected, they did just that. They just put on an absolute clinic. It was an amazing match. Um, I will be honest, uh, after the match when Cody came back in, I thought, along with thousands of others that he was going to go after Dustin and then when he got the microphone and mentioned that he'd signed um, a tag team match against the team he considered the best tag team in the world the Young Bucks and he got to pick his partner uh, I was sat there I was like oh this is going to be really good and then when he said oh no I don't need a partner and you could see him well enough and then he said I don't need a friend and, he, and then Dustin was well enough I was sat there like no 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 don't you dare don't you dare don't you dare and then when he said, I need my 
my older brother, my big brother, and that was it. But I, I, I'll admit, I cried. You see, my eyes are still a bit red. But yeah, that that got me uh, as an older brother myself. I was sort of like, oh my god, this is just amazing. Um, but yeah, what's out together? I cannot wait to see that match. That's going to be a great match. So anyway, yeah, moving on. Um, Jack Whitehall's in the ring, and the commentators said, "Oh yeah, Jack Whitehall, great. He's, he's, the guy's not funny. Fuck Jack Whitehall. Hate the guy." stand-up comedy version of the Miz is just pointless and rubbish hate him he has never said anything funny in my opinion and the opinion of many of my friends as well so Brett comes out carrying the belt now either that belt is heavy as hell or he was genuinely struggling to walk and they eventually got to show it off after that MJ whatever his bloody name is had come in and stuck his beak in they showed off the belt and I, I I love it. I had seen a picture of it, like I said, social media, blessing and a curse. I had seen a picture of it and I just love the design. It's just massive. It's just like, that's what a, a title should look like. It shouldn't just be all about having your network or your organization's logo on the front and then building little things on the side to say, oh, you know, this is who our champion is, but it's all about the company. That is just like a decent sized logo on the front and then there, it's just it just looks so prestigious and I can't wait. Um, for the the first title match for that, but yeah, it's from his Jack Whitehall. I, nah, I don't even. I know apparently the guy's a wrestling fan, but I just hate the guy. So the sixth match on the card was the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks for the AAA Tag Title match. I didn't expect the Bucks to lose for one minute, you know, given that they put so much into promoting AEW and getting it off the ground, and it pretty much being there's Cody's Kenny's baby and etc. Holy shit, the Lucha Brothers were awesome. Absolutely awesome team. I've been looking, sort of, seen plenty of things about Pentagon. And I've always thought I wouldn't mind watching him. I stopped watching Lucha Underground. And I believe he made some appearances in that and some other things. Um, I wasn't disappointed in this match at all. Loads of spots in the match. A lot of people might say, oh, there are too many spots. But this is a Young Bucks match. They're going to do what they do. That's what they do. It's their thing. They, you know, spot monkeys, and you know they don't mind admitting it for one minute. But yeah, the Lucha Brothers, awesome, awesome team. And at, at some point, I will definitely be buying a Pentagon T-shirt. I just think that guy is awesome, and Ray Phoenix as well. He's, he's he was really good. Like I say, it was a really good match. Could have gone either way at one point. I said deep down, I knew that there was no way that uh, the books were going to lose. Main event time. Alpha versus Omega 2, Jericho versus Kenny Omega. I agree with the majority of people. It wasn't as good as their New Japan match uh, at Wrestle Kingdom. But I still really enjoyed this match. Hit most of their big moves, the stuff that they're known for, a few different things. And, you know, there were times where you thought it could go anywhere. If I hadn't already have had the results spoiled for me, then I would have thought that Omega was going to win. But it didn't. Um, Jericho wins the match so he fights Adam Page who won the pre-show rumble to get the opportunity to fight for the title so Page versus Jericho for the AEW title um, I'm calling it with a, probably most other people who watch the event that Jericho will be the inaugural AEW champion check me out using big words two big words today I'm quite proud of myself poignant and inaugural then whilst Jericho's running his mouth and demanding that the crowd thank him uh, there was a massive cheer and John Moxley came out John Moxley who was Dean Ambrose in WWE came out with the jacket with Mox on the back and made his way to the ring dropped Jericho on his head dropped the referee picked up um, uh, Kenny Omega tried to drop him on his head had a bit of a scrap with him up to the ramp dropped him on the poker chips John Moxley is back now I remember seeing Mox before he became Ambrose in WWE I watched some CZW stuff with him and I was I was a massive fan of John Moxley um, anybody who knows me personally or is you know familiar with my channel knows I am an Ambrose fan and I am I have loads of t-shirts I've got the side plates obviously for the belt even though I knew he was leaving I still got them Mox is a whole different animal to Dean Ambrose he's just going to be amazing in there especially that I haven't seen the, the epic promo that he cut yet. I've yet to watch that. 
but he, he's just going to be now he's allowed to just do his thing and be who he wants to be you watch it Mox is going to be a massive massive player in AEW and it's a matter of time before he becomes an AEW champion so overall what did I think to the pay-per-view great debut pay-per-view for all elite wrestling in my opinion so the, the matches with the Chinese guys and the Japanese women and everything and all that really split it up for me essentially just being you know names that are all recognized massively but yeah I am I thoroughly enjoyed it and I I am AEW um, I am looking forward to the next pay-per-view and I'm looking forward to starting watching their weekly show it's available over here on ITV apparently so that's that's going to be cool so I'll be able to actually watch it on the ITV hub um, which is like an on-demand thing so yeah can't wait um, I, I am AEW so yeah um, it's going to definitely definitely put WWE on its heels um, for sure so we'll have to wait and see WWE are going to have to book their ideas up now because they are going to have a war on their hands again and I don't see Vince being able to buy out AEW like he did with WCW purely because AEW hasn't got you know, dipshit been through so booking but you know that's a different subject so yeah uh, that's my thoughts on Double or Nothing I really enjoyed it I'm looking forward to the next one and I think the next pay-per-view is for a really good cause so that'll do it for this video guys please feel free to leave any comments uh, down below about which matches you enjoyed in particular uh, you know what you're looking forward to what you're hoping that AEW will do and I'll see you soon with something new uh, until then guys take it easy look after yourself thank you for watching the video thank you for taking to the time to subscribe i can't talk i apologize um but yeah that'll do it for me guys i'll see you later bye for now